we kept it as a final, not so final, uh, little announcement, little big announcement. Can I please ask uh, Kyle from iFixit, Tom Hansing from Anstiftung Foundation, Martine from Repair Cafe, and uh, Peter from Fixit Clinic to all come on stage that doesn't have a stage. <laughs> so we mentioned that uh, we have started with the Open Repair Alliance, uh, an adventure in bringing together people and organizations that are working for community repair in support of it. And uh, if you can all come, uh, we have prepared a very quick, <laughs> short, and sweet declaration uh, that we'd like you to share with everyone. Tom? Yeah, guess what? Electrical and electronic products are increasingly hard to repair, not upgradable, and often unsupported by manufacturers beyond the warranty period. This generates unacceptable level of le electronic waste with huge environmental impact across the world. However, the voice of concerned citizens and their discontent with the status quo are rarely part of these conversations. As organizations supporting community repair, we have an important role to share the evidence of the work that we do and the recurrent faults and challenges in repairing them in order to promote and demand more repairability. Achieving change in the way products are made, supported and taken care of when they need a repair requires more than what any individual organization can do alone. Together, we can present a much stronger case to manufacturers, designers, and policy makers. And you were saying consumers as well. <laughs> and citizens. So, okay, so what, right? Uh, we decided that we need to make this more visible and to be able to make our stories become the mainstream. What better idea than Janet? Okay, well, nobody has ever taken the International Day of Repair. Um, we saw that Martina already has, uh, has this month has declared the International Repair Cafe Week, but we thought, you know what, we need, we need everybody in. We need everybody in. So in, in coinciding with her week, we're declaring October 21st the International Day of Repair. And if you can even just go and tinker in public, do anything repair related, it doesn't have to be a community repair event, but make repair visible on the 21st of October. That will be amazing. And we'll try and spread the word as much as possible. This year it may be small, but next year we want it to be massive. Yeah. And, and we want it to be about the pride of repairing and not just necessarily for communities. And we want it to be about the pride of the local heroes that make the repair economy thrive and that give jobs and a future to our planet. And we want it to be the pride in manufacturers, the small ones first, who gets this, to make their products repairable and to stand for the right to repair. So please celebrate the third Saturday in October, starting with the 21st, with all of us, and make a big party. <laughs> okay, woo! <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Okay. And do you want to introduce Sean? Yeah. And last but not least, as they say, uh, we'd like to invite Sean Berry, London member, Assembly member, to come on stage and say a few final words after having dived in the legal session about Norway and their struggle. Uh, Sean not only is a Green Londor Assembly member, uh, she's also a local councillor in uh, Camden, and she also has a past caring about mending. In fact, she wrote a book before any of us have done any restart party about a hundred ways to mend and fix things. Four hundred. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a lot more. Sorry. So. Uh, Please come and share a few words of wisdom from this crazy London that is still open for the time being to repair and everything else. Thank you. Great. Hi. <laughs> 
So, yeah, hi. Thank you for asking me to just say a few words, and I won't speak for very long. Um, but, yeah, it's a real honour to be asked to come here. My history with uh, the Restart Project goes back quite a long way now. Um, I first met them when parts of the local Green Party, where I'm a local councillor, um, not me, had heard of them, invited them to come to our local uh, pub and do a restart party there. Um, after which, um, I, as a local councillor, um, and I was elected in 2014, it's one of the first things I did was try was say to the council, look, these guys would really like to take over this, this empty building that you've got next to your recycling centre and do repairs and workshops there. Um, and I couldn't get them to agree. They were like, well, we might want that building one day. And what about health and safety? And all the things that you've been talking about today, they're still being thrown up in the way of um, people just common sense being get, able to get on and repair things. Um, so, yeah, I'm a little frustrated that things aren't moving on quicker than they were. Um, I was talking, the reason I couldn't come earlier to the event today, and I really enjoyed the workshop that I was in, because we were basically plotting to change laws, which is one of my favourite things. Um, is I was I was in my council ward. I was I was knocking on doors, talking to my um, my local constituents. But I was doing that with uh, my colleague Kirsten, who is from uh, Denmark, and she regularly still spends time in Copenhagen. Um, and when I said I was coming here, she said, "You know what? In Copenhagen, we have these shops, and every time there's like an empty shop, people move in and set up a, re a repairing workshop, and it's all the community." I'm like, Oh, wow, you know, this is exactly what we should have had in Camden. And they haven't been doing it that long. You know, this happens in other places, and why can't it happen here? Um, my job now, as well as being a Camden councillor, is I'm on the London Assembly. Um, I don't sit on the, uh, the Environment Committee there. I focus a lot of my effort on housing, a lot of my effort on um, policing issues, actually. Um, but the Environment Committee has published recently a report on the circular economy in London. Um, and I've just got it out to look at look at this um, today. And it says, you know, it says good things. It says, you know, if we could make sure that more of our resources circulated more before they ended up back in landfill, if we could do more repairs, that would be good. But it's all about how to do this, and as the, as the title implies, the circular economy, as part of business. And I really think that the community side of things is, is left out, even, even of my own organisation's um, report on this. And so the bit about um, the voices of concerned citizens, their discontent, the community organisations not being listened to that's in the statement that was just read out, I think is really, really important. And obviously you're filling the gap with the work that you're doing today, bringing everyone together. Um, and I think that's just fantastic um all I've, I've only been here for an hour and i wish i had come earlier um that's so international so interesting the you know, sharing actual knowledge sharing your experiences um and what you're doing is is really really important as well as as well as interesting and geeky to people who like to write books about 400 ways to repair things um really looking forward to the international day of repair um, remind me about that. I'll repair something on, on Twitter and uh, that would be great. And uh, all the actions, I hope you take all the actions that you promised to do um, coming away from today. I just think it's, it's, it's exactly what I love. It's community, it's about uh, the earth, it's about um, fairness as well. And those titles that you gave to your sessions are, are exactly right. It's what this is all about. So I will shut up now and say thank you to everyone who came. Thank you to everyone who organised it. And uh, keep up the fantastic work. I couldn't be more proud of you.